we shall continue in this lecture the hydrogen molecule a two electron two nuclei four particle system and it is also the first system uh, elementary which brings in the electron electron repulsion to the uh, four of chemical bonding. Uh, this is uh, in large uh, electron multi electron system it is often referred to as the electron correlation term uh, due to many pairs of electron uh, repulsions and it is an extremely important term uh, particularly coulombic energy term for chemical bonding aspects. We shall look at the hydrogen molecule ion uh, hydrogen molecule in a uh, simple manner following two elementary treatments and later on indicate what are the developments when one considers the molecular motion uh, in a more complete fashion including the, uh, the spectroscopic kind of terms that is the nuclear motion kinetic energy terms and so on. But for today's lecture and also probably the lecture that follows we shall uh, operate on the Born Oppenheimer approximation and assume that the nuclei are stationary. So, this lecture hydrogen molecule uh, we shall look at it with the help of two broad pictures two broad theories the valence bond theory or valence bond method often called VB method. First proposed by uh, Heitler, Walter Heitler I think I have to check my history Walter Heitler and uh, Fritz London. 1927 the year when Born and Oppenheimer also published the approximation for molecular systems and for solving the Schrodinger equation. Okay. Their idea is to use the picture that chemists had until then namely that the electrons are shared between nuclei. Uh, you might recall from elementary chemistry uh, that G. N. Lewis, Gilbert Newton Lewis, the most famous American chemist in the uh, early 20th century, who came up with the octet rule and also many other uh, theoretical methods for the study of valence in chemistry, pre quantum mechanical, and who was also well known as a thermodynamicist and who wrote probably the best known thermodynamics book in chemical thermodynamics, uh, the book by Lewis and Randall. Uh, which is very famous and uh, which has been revised by his uh, colleagues uh, Kenneth Pitzer and uh, Brewer. It is G. N. Lewis who had this idea of sharing of the electrons uh, between the atoms and you might remember the dot pictures. The valence bond method is somewhat closely associated with this idea that the electron pair is localized. localized and uh, in bonding the electron pair finds most of its time between the bond distances. The other method which we talked about in the hydrogen molecule ion the molecular orbital method the MO processes molecular orbital assumes that the electron uh, is more like a, uh, uh, the electron density being shared all around the molecule uh, using uh, or in a molecular orbital which is a linear combination of uh, the atomic orbitals the constituent atomic orbitals. The, uh, we will not discuss the differences between the two approaches here first let us study what these approaches are and then uh, later on as we progress further into quantum chemistry and more details 
we can worry about which method is better for which system or if there is any one single method and so on. Uh, most of the time today of course, people worry about uh, using the linear combination of atomic orbitals, but not even the atomic orbitals that were first proposed uh, for the hydrogen atom, something else as I have been telling you earlier. They use the Gaussian orbitals and then there are other methods for calculating, but these theories the V B and the M O theories give you in essence the philosophical thinking that went on at the time when computers were not available. And at the time, uh, I mean unfortunately I may say so uh, and I am not going to invite uh, uh, friendly criticisms by from my colleagues that chemistry being turned into a more like a computational machine uh, in the last 15, 20 years or maybe about 30, 40 years. There is so much more computation to chemistry than chemistry itself in the last uh, several years or maybe even several decades. That some of these theories look very primitive and very naive, but they are not. The fundamental aspects that went into these theories is worth revisiting and worth looking at again and again. So, we shall look at the molecular orbital method to start with and then come back to the VB theory later. Okay. So, my lecture today will contain a bit of description of the MO theory and out of that how the V B approach can be extracted and a bit of calculations on the wave functions. Uh, the psi and finally, uh, as uh, we move far I mean move further we calculate energies the orbital energies or hydrogen molecular energies and then we shall look at the properties that is pictorial representations of these systems. So, let us start with the MO approach by first considering the hydrogen molecule as the hydrogen molecule ion H 2 plus plus an electron, assuming that the electron electron repulsion is minimal. Is not so important as to change uh, our fundamental description of the orbital of the electron being the 1 s uh, orbital. The 1 s orbital of the hydrogen atom is an Eigen function for the hydrogen atom electron orbital, the Hamiltonian electronic Hamiltonian. It is an exact Eigen function in the absence of any external magnetic fields and therefore, it serves as a starting point for many descriptions. The moment you have two electrons in a system like for example, helium atom or uh, hydrogen molecule where you have also two nuclei. The description of the electronic uh, levels or electronic structure in a molecule as 1 s, 2 s, 2 p, 3 s, 3 p etcetera that description is an approximate one is probably good as a 0 order approximation if I may quote perturbation theory as an example. They are not exact Eigen solutions. Therefore, as a starting point, if we are using the hydrogen molecular ion 1 s orbital and we assume that there is one more electron associated with this hydrogen molecule ion, so that the hydrogen molecule is uh, visualized, then what you would expect is the wave function for the 1 s electron for the electron in the hydrogen molecule ion and the wave function for the electron as it approaches the H 2 plus to be independent of each other. And if you put the electron 1 coordinate as R A or 1, let me uh, R 1 and the electron 2 coordinate as R 2, what one can expect is in the same sense as uh, the particle in a 2D box from a particle in the one dimensional box 
when the dimension increases or when the number of particles increase and when the uh, particles do not interact. The overall wave function is the product of the wave functions of the non-interacting particle and the overall energy is the sum of the non-interacting particles. So, in that sense if we have to write SI molecular orbital for hydrogen molecule, we may start with this 1 by root 2 into 1 plus S A B times phi 1 S A for electron 1 or 1 and the same electron 1 S A, 1 S B, same electron in the 1 S B orbital times the wave function for the second electron in which everything is the same except R 1 is R 2. So, that what you have is 1 by root 2 times 1 plus S A B times phi 1 S A R 2 plus phi 1 S B R 2. So, that the overall wave function consists of four terms namely 1 by 2 into 1 plus S A B times let me write it in a slightly different order not in the order in which you normally do the multiplication, but let me write it as 1 S A R 1 phi 1 S B R 2 one of the terms that come out by multiplying this and uh, this one and likewise we will do the multiplication of these two phi 1 S A R 2 phi 1 S B R 1 and then we write the remaining terms namely phi 1 S A R 1 phi 1 S A R 2 plus phi 1 S B R 1 phi 1 S B R 2. The reason for organizing it this way should be clear in a few minutes when we discuss balance bond theory, but let us look at these terms individually. So, we have a linear combination of uh, the two electron wave functions, the basis functions, the two electron wave functions such that electron 1 is uh, associated with atom A and electron 2 is associated with atom B as you have seen in the highlighted portion here. Now, let me change the highlight and look at the same term here highlighted with a different color. You see that it is like electron 2 associated with the 1s atom, 1s orbital of atom A and electron 1 associated with the 1s orbital of atom B. If you take the square of the coefficients, the linear combination coefficients, they represent the probability that the electrons are such that electron 1 is in the 1s orbital of A, electron 2 is simultaneously in the 1s orbital of B and vice versa. That is what these individual terms mean and that is a sort of a localized picture. You are assuming that the electron 1 is not perturbed by the fact that electron 2 is associated with the other atom. What you call as A or B is, is your label, my label. Atom 1 and 2, electrons are indistinguishable, the nuclei are indistinguishable. Therefore, these two at the, the two highlighted uh, orbital contributions have to be exactly the same level of contribution. Now, look at the next two terms that uh, I have written at the bottom. Okay, let's highlight it with a different color. The square of the coefficient associated with this orbital essentially tells you that electron 1 is in uh, the 1 s orbital of atom A and electron 2 is also in the 1 s orbital of atom A. Uh, it looks like the hydrogen atom B uh, I mean has lost its electron and that both the electrons are now associated with the atom A. It is like a H minus H plus if I may say so. The system is H 1 uh, minus, so let me write this H 1 
minus n h 2 plus. The moment I say this, you will immediately notice that the term I have left out without any description corresponds exactly to the same as the previous one with the minus and plus getting interchange h 1 plus and h 2 minus. What is important is that all these four contributions in terms of probabilities of finding the electrons uh, in the respective orbitals of the respective atoms, if you look at that, because the squares of the coefficients here, what is the square of these coefficients? It is 1 by 4 into 1 plus s a b whole square, that is the same number, you add it 4 times okay, with the appropriate normalization uh, constant. So, you have that all these 4 are equally weighted, that is the possibility that the electrons are equally shared by both of these atoms and the possibility that the electrons are likely to be found in one atom absolutely certainly versus the other, both possibilities are weighted by the same uh, level or to the same degree and that seems like a little bit far fetched. And therefore, if we uh, argue this on the basis of what we have written down and calculate the energy for the hydrogen molecule, uh, we must expect an energy quite different from what uh, the experimentally uh, obtained minimum or what is called the exact minimum. So, the ionic contributions as you would call them, this is the ionic contribution are weighted by the same amount as the covalent contribution as you see here covalent and uh, that is not a very uh, comfortable picture if we were to assume a molecular orbital theory based on two non-interacting electrons and then we take the product of the electrons uh, together and then find out. Now, this is coming from one end of the uh, approach. Now, valence bond theory which was proposed by Heitler and London also starts with the idea that hydrogen A with its electron 1 and hydrogen B with its electron 2 as they approach the distance of what is called the closest approach and the distance of minimum uh, energy at some point obviously, they form a bond and therefore, the energy is the minimum and uh, the valence bond approach assumes that the wave function for this uh, system should be expressed as the wave function for the 1s electron in atom A or 1 times the wave function for the 1s electron in atom B or 2. But because the electrons are indistinguishable, the valence bond approach uh, will have to logically correct this by including 1s A or 2 psi 1 s b or 1, which electron is which when they are close and when the molecule is formed, we cannot distinguish the electron and therefore, these are the two contributions a linear combination that we can think of and the valence bond theory starts with this as a uh, the what is called the a variationally uh, correct approach. Okay. In principle, you can write this as c 1 and the C 2 if you wish to, but again as we have in the case of hydrogen molecule ion, there is no reason to suspect C 1 and C 2 to be different from each other except possibly for a minus sign. Okay. So, this is the starting point. So, where do we begin? Should we begin at this point that is the psi V B or should we study the psi M O? Well, before I give you the answer, in fact, we are going to look at the answer, the, the, the problem using both the methods. Uh, let me just also point out that the moment you write the psi valence bond like this, the wave function normalization, if you are looking at psi 1, 2, okay, V B, this is uh, essentially psi 1, 2, V B 1, 2. Okay. 
psi star psi 1 2 since these are all real orbitals and the coefficients we assume are real we can write psi 1 2 d r 1 d r 2 integration over both the electron coordinates the normalization of this wave function leading to 1 must give us this condition namely uh, let us write this as c squared times psi 1 s a r 1 plus psi 1 s b r 2 oh I am sorry uh, not a plus oh. psi 1 s b r 2 plus psi 1 s a r 2 psi 1 s b r 1 whole square d r 1 d r 2 integration of all the three uh, directional coordinates of the electron uh, 1 and the electron 2 that is the total space for both the electrons and that should be 1 which tells us immediately that we can write this as 4 integrals. So, expand this we will get 4 terms c square the integral psi 1 s a r 1 square d r 1 times psi 1 s b r 2 squared d r 2 that is the first term and the other three terms are integral psi 1 s a r 2 squared, but let me do that with d r 2 and psi 1 s b r 1 squared and integrate that over the d r 1. So, these are all uh, the integrals of the atomic orbitals normalized and then you have the term which is what I have done is a square plus b square this is a square and this is b square and then we have. Uh, so, if we call this a and b this is 2 a b is what we have. So, therefore, twice the integral psi 1 s a r 1 psi 1 s b r 1 d r 1 this is one integral involving the electron coordinates of r 1 and the other integral is psi 1 s a r 2 psi 1 s b r 2 d r 2 okay. and this should be equal to 1. So, what should I have? I should have a bigger square bracket here covering this c square. Okay. So, let us do that. Okay. That is what this is. Okay. So, what we have is the first integral uh, is uh, nothing other than the atomic orbital normalization for electron in atom 1 and electron in atom 2. So, that product is 1 is to 1, 1 times 1 and likewise the second integral we just call r 1 and r 2 as coordinates. So, if in it is integrated over the entire coordinate r 2 therefore, psi 1 s a r 2 whole square d r 2 is the same as psi 1 s a r 1 square d r 1 because all the three dimensional space is covered therefore, this is also 1 and uh, this you have recognized immediately as the overlap integral that we talked about in the last two lectures. 1 is a r 1, 1 is b r 1 that is electron 1 in 1 is a and 1 is b therefore, the two orbital overlap integral and what you see here is s square this is an s this is an s therefore, the normalization constant for this problem is c square 2 into 1 plus s square that should be 1 and therefore, c is 1 by square root of 2 into 1 plus s square. So, what we have therefore, is the wave function psi v b of 1 2 is 1 by square root of 2 into 1 plus s square times psi 1 s a 1 or 1 psi 1 s b or 2 plus psi 1 s a or 2 psi 1 s b or 1. 
So, if you go back and look at the molecular orbital picture that we discussed, uh, you see if retaining only these two colored terms, the blue and uh, the, the, the green and the yellow term, uh, you see that that is going to be a small problem with respect to the normalization constant if we keep only these, but uh, neglect these. That is exactly what we did here. So, if we start with the valence bond orbital, we have this as the overall electron uh, uh, orbital for the two electrons, but there is still one more problem. This is not uh, uh, satisfying the anti-symmetry principle of the two electrons. Now, we have two electrons, therefore, it is important for uh, the wave function to be overall negative if the coordinates of both the wave functions, both the electrons are interchanged. So, if I do a permutation of the electrons 1 and 2 on psi v b 1 2, obviously I violate the Pauli's anti-symmetry principle. Therefore, this picture is not a complete picture. The two electrons when they are together in an orbital system, uh, you have to worry about the exchange of both the space and the spin coordinates and we have not included the spin in this part. Uh, if we have to include the spin, spin part should be anti-symmetric because the space part is symmetric. Remember, if you interchange R 1 and R 2, if you interchange R 1 and R 2, you are going to get exactly the same wave function. Therefore, the wave function is symmetric. The electron being a fermion, that is not what we want. We wanted the electron to be, the electron wave function to be anti-symmetric to the interchange of the two electron coordinates. Therefore, it is important to have the spin of this psi v b 1 2 to contain, to be replaced by psi v b 1 2 times a spin function phi spin 1 2 and because this is symmetric as we have chosen, it is important for us to have this as anti-symmetric. Therefore, the wave function that we choose must be psi v b 1 2 multiplied by 1 by square root 2, you remember the anti-symmetric spin wave function is alpha 1 beta 2 minus beta 1 alpha 2. Okay. This is a singlet state. Okay. On the other hand, if we take the linear combination of psi v b, let us call this plus and if we take the linear combination minus, which we call as psi 1 s a, which we write psi 1 s a or 1, we write this as, uh, we do not need the constants, I know what this constant is. It is easy to verify that it is 1 minus s square into square root 2. You will get the combination psi 1 s a or 1 psi 1 s b or 2 minus psi 1 s a or 2 psi 1 s b or 1. If we do this, the spin part the psi m o psi uh, valence bond orbital of 1 2 should now be replaced by psi v b minus times a symmetric part which is alpha 1 alpha 2 for the two spins or 1 by root 2 alpha 1 beta 2 plus beta 1 alpha 2 or beta 1 beta 2. Any one of the three is as good as the other because what we have is uh, the, uh, the spin part is symmetric with respect to the interchange and in the absence of interactions uh, of the electron spins with each other or the spin with the electron orbital or with an external magnetic field, uh, all these three states are degenerate and therefore, you see that this is called the triplet state. The anti-symmetric 
linear combination of the spatial orbitals of the electrons uh, has to be associated with the triplet state of the pair of electrons in their spin quantum numbers. So, these are things that one has to keep in mind, but for the calculations that we are going to do in the this uh, lecture and the next lecture, we are not going to worry about the spin part of it. Therefore, the spin part is not going to change the energy levels by any means, but it has to be kept in mind that it is there and uh, the two electrons are either paired as you might uh, normally would like to imagine in an antisymmetric combination with a spin 0. The spin 0 essentially means spin up and spin down in the same orbital and now you have the Pauli's principle of all the four quantum numbers of the two electrons not being the same because a spin quantum number of one of the electron is a plus a half, the other electron is a minus a half. So, the antisymmetry principle is satisfied. Whereas, if you have the two electrons in the two different orbitals, it does not matter whether they are like this or whether they are like this or whether they are like this up and down. Okay. It does not matter up and down or this way, that way. That is what we call as a triplet state and that is of course, we will find out that it is a very highly energetic state and therefore, it is not a bonding orbital for our purposes. So, the balance bond theory when we introduce this linear combination, which is a truncated linear combination from this, from the molecular orbital theory, keeping only the covalent contribution in, in the chemical sense, if we do that and make amendments for the s yes by writing this as 1 by square root of 2 into 1 plus s square, we have now a wave function and that is a proposed wave function, we calculate the energy of the system and that is the valence bond uh, orbital energy. So, let us proceed with that calculation in the remaining time. We will come back to molecular orbital theory later. Okay. So, what is the Hamiltonian for the hydrogen molecule? Hamiltonian for the hydrogen molecule. Of course, we need this classical picture of having the two electrons, not a parallelogram exactly, but it is two electrons in two arbitrary positions. This is the nucleus A, B, electron 1, electron 2 and if we call this as the coordinates R 1 and R 2, we have this is electron A. So, we call this R A 1 and this is R A B similar to our previous notation. This is R 1 2 the electron electron uh, uh, classical charge point charge the distances between the two point charges and then we have R A 2 electron 2 from the nucleus A electron 1 from the nucleus B we will write this as R B 1 and the electron two from the nucleus B as R B two and once we have written this the Hamiltonian is uh, within the bond Oppenheimer approximation of not worrying about the nuclear uh, kinetic energies. So, we have minus h bar square by 2 m e we have del electron 1 square whatever is the coordinate that we need to put in and electron 2 square for the kinetic energy of the two electrons and the potential energy is now going to be a sum of four attraction terms coulombic attraction terms electron 1 with the nucleus A, electron 1 with the nucleus B, electron 2 with the nucleus A, electron 2 with the nucleus B. So, you have four uh, electron nuclear attraction terms and then we also have two uh, electron electron and nuclear nuclear uh, repulsion terms electron 1 with electron 2 and nucleus 1 with the nucleus 2. We will include the nuclear nuclear repulsion term in our calculation because we want to calculate the hydrogen molecule energy as a function of the internuclear separation between the two hydrogen atoms to find out what is the minimum and where is the minimum and what uh, that distance corresponds to and how does it correlate with the experimentally determined the bond energy and the bond distances. So, to include those terms we have to write minus e square by 4 pi epsilon naught 
and the coulombic attraction terms are 1 by R A 1, 1 by R A 2 plus 1 by R B 1 plus 1 by R B 2, which are the distances of the electrons 1 and 2 from the nucleus A and B. Okay. And the last term is of course, minus E square by 4 pi epsilon naught, 1 by R 1 2, the inter sorry there should be a plus here, the internuclear distance, inter electron repulsion, electron electron repulsion and the nuclear nuclear repulsion or okay. So, this is the Hamiltonian. Therefore, the energy that we have to calculate the average value for this psi v b with the plus combination neglect the spins orbitals at the moment. it does not matter even if you put that in the spin coordinates are independent of the spatial coordinates. So, you will write 1 by square root of uh, 2 alpha 1 beta 2 minus beta 1 alpha 2, uh, the ket times the, the, the bra state times the ket state and that of course, is normalized already. Therefore, the anti-symmetric state normalized uh, to give you 1 and it disappears from the calculation because the Hamiltonian does not contain any spin orbit interaction. So, it is pedantic to include or not to include but it is important to remember that it is there. Otherwise, all the calculations are technically wrong, because the electron wave function does not satisfy the Pauli principle. Okay. So, let us write this energy as the integral, uh, okay. let us uh, have the molecular, uh, the normalization constant 1 by 2 into 1 plus s square, that is the psi star psi normalization constant and then we have the integral psi 1 s a or 1 psi 1 s b or 2 plus psi 1 s a or 2 psi 1 s b or 1 times the Hamiltonian which is minus h bar square by 2 m e del e 1 square plus del E 2 square minus E square by 4 pi epsilon naught times 1 by R A 1 plus 1 by R A 2 plus 1 by R B 1 plus 1 by R B 2. Now, having written this, let me uh, perhaps rewrite this in a slightly different way. Okay. Let us do it, uh, let us do it somewhat uh, differently. Okay. To get the picture that we will simplify these energies very quickly. So, let us write the del E 1 square and uh, let us write the term corresponding to E square by 4 pi epsilon naught or A 1 as one set of terms. Then we have minus h bar square by 2 m e del E 2 square minus E square by 4 pi epsilon naught or B 2 and then write the remaining terms namely minus E square by 4 pi epsilon naught 1 by or A 2 plus 1 by or B 1 minus 1 by or 1 2 minus 1 by or A B. All of this as a Hamiltonian acting on the wave function on the right, which is psi 1 s a or 1 psi 1 s b or 2 plus psi 1 s a or 2 psi 1 s b or 1 and integrated over both the uh, electron uh, variables namely d or 1. Three, three dimensional integral d r 2, this is r 1 square uh, theta sin theta 1 d r 1 d theta 1 d phi 1 and likewise for the r 2 square uh, it is uh, r 2 square d r 2 sin theta 2 uh, d theta 2 d phi 2, except that we have to define the thetas and phi's carefully and therefore, the evaluation of some of the integrals in this uh, uh, in the way in which it is written, 
you would see that it involves two electron coordinates centered on two nuclei, particularly for the R 1 2 term, the electron electron repulsion term. So, you are going to get more complicated integrals to calculate, but uh, for the hydrogen electron wave function with the 1 s orbital function, some of these electrons can be exactly calculated and I will do that in the assignment later on. But let me stop at this point before expanding this any further, uh, merely because from this point onwards the calculation of the energies, we need to apply the same symmetry and the labeling problems that we had with the hydrogen molecule ion in seeing that certain orbitals are exactly the same as certain other orbitals, certain integrals are exactly the same as certain other integrals and therefore, you have to do a counting carefully and that we will start afresh in the next lecture. But let me just summarize what I uh, had for uh, today's lecture, that the hydrogen molecule uh, system that we are studying, we are starting with the premises of the balance bond approach. Uh, namely that the electrons are localized, which means electron 1 in uh, orbital 1, electron 2 in orbital 2 of the two different nuclei. And because the electrons are indistinguishable, an interchange between these two coordinates is as much uh, important as considering only one term. And therefore, there is a weight of these two being put together. We have used a linear combination psi 1 s a r 1, psi 1 s b r 2 that you see here in the screen plus psi 1 s a r 2 psi 1 s b r 1 as a starting point. Then we also talked about the spin of the two electrons, because the overall wave function of the two electron system must be antisymmetric to the interchange of the coordinates of both the electrons or the interchange of both the electrons. And so, when the spin and the spatial coordinates are interchanged, it is important to have uh, a symmetric combination of the uh, linear combination to be associated with an antisymmetric combination of the spin wave functions and vice versa. And then we just wrote down the hydrogen molecule uh, energy expression, but we have not calculated. Our starting point for the next lecture would be this integral uh, namely uh, the what you see in the screen. So, we will start from here and we will calculate this until then. Thank you very much.